our Facebook friends now and just really get your mind wrapped around the season that we're in. Christmas. It just seems like the summer ends and we try to hang on to that. We're hoping for an Indian summer. And then it goes, you get a little bit of that and it goes into fall and it just seems like the next thing you know, you wake up one morning and it's December 1st. It's all downhill from there. It's winters here and we don't like that. We don't like snow, at least to deal with the mess it makes, right? The leaves come off the trees and, and from there you gotta just deal with it. But it does represent the time of year of hope. It's when Jesus came on the scene, amen? So to get our minds wrapped around that, and, and that's really essentially listening to the, the Christmas music being integrated into the set of music. And, and just to, to tell you that's, wow, I don't even know how to, to segue into where I'm really going to go. This has been a crazy week here at Families of Faith, to say the least. We lost a dear teacher this week, and uh, a teacher that was actually with us from the conception of Families of Faith Christian Academy. Took everybody, took the wind out of us. We didn't, we didn't want to, we didn't want to hear that. And, and so we would press forward and rallied together and and I was watching the children in the school practicing for, you know, a Christmas presentation. And Miss Connie had a large part in that. And yet, they have to go on without her. Well, that's a tall order, I'm just going to tell you right there. If we stopped with that, that would be a tall order. But we didn't stop with that. Didn't stop with that. The other night I got a call in the middle of the night and somebody that was a part of our, large part of our, our motorcycle church over there on Friar and, and as part of this church as well whose uh, fiance was struggling with cancer lost his battle and I got that call in, in the middle of the night. And, uh, and this individual was on the phone just trying to deal with the reality of him being taken from the home by the coroner. 5.30 the same morning, I get a call and it's from our senior pastor that says that uh, a tragedy has happened and a young man has taken his life and had to go out to this resident to be with the family and, and Brother Dave came with and I was so grateful that I had a servant of God that was willing to jump to it right now. But I tell you that and then we in our in our men's breakfast this morning, and we're sharing, we're talking about when the foundations are shaken, what does the righteous do? And we started to unpack this, and what does that look like? And somebody else there says that somebody that he works with had a, one of their children commit suicide the same day. And so here you have it, it's the Christmas season. It's like, preacher, boy, you're taking us off in a crazy direction. I have to tell you, I really think right now, if I could say anything, if I could say anything to the church of Jesus Christ, church, we got to wake up. You hear what I'm telling you? Folks, there are so many things that are they're occupying our time, they're occupying our focus, they're occupying our lives that don't weigh a hill of beans. Do you hear what I'm telling you? You know what? Listen, bear with me as I get started because, man, this has been one of those weeks. And I just don't want to miss this opportunity to change our focus from something crazy or we're going to have this celebratory time that ends up being all about us and we go out of here and we go do some more shopping or we feel good and put some more decorations up and we go to bed and it's, and it's about us. Instead of what does God want to do with us here right now tonight? 
What does he want to do as we sense his presence? You know, it's, it's funny. I've been through a lot of ministry with Brother Dave over the years. He actually came into our ministry as somebody that was in our men's house. And now him and his wife head that up. An amazing transformation over all the years. Got to see him trust God to step out in faith that many, many would have just trembled their knees at the decisions that he made that changed the course of the direction of his life. And as I watched those things happen, many times I got to experience things with him. And we have a relationship that runs deeper than some relationships because we've experienced things together. And I've said to him when I see something in him, I'll say, you know, what are you experiencing? And one was our time down in the city at Chapuza. We're down there, and we, meet, we met with a friend of ours who's, part, who's he's a godly man. He's a Christian blues guy, Glenn Kaiser. And we spent some time with him. We've seen what they do and what their life is and the place that they live in. And I got outside with Brother Dave, and we got in the van, and I looked at him, and he, and he looked like I felt. And I said, what are you experiencing right now? How do you feel? And he said, shh. He said, ashamed. Ashamed. We are so blessed here in Shanahan, Illinois. We are so blessed with what we know as normal here at Families of Faith Church. We are blessed beyond measure, overflowing, spilling over in abundance. Blessed. And God wants us to make a difference for his kingdom with that blessing. And what we've seen is we were thanking the Lord Jesus that we weren't called into the, into the inner city where our, our good friend Glenn is called. And his ministry is part of every single day. We're thanking the Lord that we're called to Shannon, Illinois with these blessings that we know as normal. But we know this, God wants a return on those blessings. Do you hear me? Hello, I, I heard two of you. Do you hear me? And so when I, when I say that, and I reflect on it, I, I want you to be encouraged with what I'm telling you because together we come together and we've already won because Jesus won it already. But the world doesn't know that. They don't know that. And we walk around this planet and we look like somebody, you know, peed in our Cheerios or let the air out of our balloon. We look defeated in a world that they need to see the hope of Jesus Christ in our lives. Are you with me? You guys ought to make some noise. Because at some point we need to, don't we? Don't we need to make some noise? Isn't there a point in time? You know, I looked at Brother Dave as we were in the home of these people who had lost their son. And I'm looking at him thinking, oh God. I joke with the guys sometimes and say, I could have went two lifetimes without seeing that. It's usually them hiking up their pants or, or, or doing something that I'd just rather not see. But I could have went an eternity without being part of what I had to be part of. And I was thankful I had a brother standing there with me. But let me tell you something, folks. We have hope in Christ. This season represents hope entering this world. Are you with me? I want, I want to read you a scripture. You guys don't have it, so don't worry about it. It's 1 Peter chapter 1. Verse 3 and following says, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into living hope. through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. An inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while you may have to suffer grief of all kinds of trials, these have come, so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which is precious even though refined by the fire, 
may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Amen? Okay. We ought to have a hope that is illuminated out of us. Do you hear what I'm saying? Church, we can't be lethargic is what I'm telling you. We can't be lethargic in this world. There's people who need to know the hope that is found in Jesus Christ. And we got to be those people. It means that we can't have an agenda that we've already written and that, that God doesn't have any place in. This is a season. It's an Advent season. You know, it's the, the four weeks of December, you know. It's when Jesus entered the world. We'd like to spend this time, I would think, to think about the real meaning of Christmas. Do you understand hope entering the world? Jesus. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus came into this world as a baby, as Emmanuel, God with us. Amen? Amen. He was the promised hope. Isaiah 9, 2 says this. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the deep darkness, a light has dawned. Isaiah 9, 6 and 7 says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of Greatness, of his government, and peace will be, will be no end. And he will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom established and uphold it with justice and righteousness from the time on forever. And zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Jesus. Jesus. Folks, I have to tell you, Thinking about this time of year, thinking about getting our mind focused on the one that was promised, right? Jesus, Emmanuel. Getting our mind right. What is the significance? Isaiah 7, 14, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign, a virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Emmanuel. We remember that Jesus came to walk with us, to die for us, and that we should receive him. Do you understand? That's where, the, that's where the significance comes in, is that we would receive him. Amen? He came to walk with us, right? He left us the Holy Spirit. And guess what? We're supposed to share Jesus with this lost world. So we receive him, right? So at some point in your life, at some point you found yourself at a place to receive Christ. Amen? Yeah? Do we know Jesus here? Has there been a time that you've asked the Lord Jesus to rescue you, to save you. Yes? Is that two, three? Two, two of you. Three? Yes? All right. If that's the case, the world should know it, don't you think? Don't you think? He came. He walked amongst us. He died on a cross. He rose again. And his hope is that the world would receive him, right? Amen. Amen. John chapter 1, verse 11 and 12 says, He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Folks, do we believe that? Let me ask you. All right. Let me come down here. I've already tripped over chords and stuff because I wasn't paying a lick of attention because I'm, I'm all worked up tonight. Because I believe that to get our minds wrapped around what's happening right in front of us, something has to snap us into reality, doesn't it? I mean, can you imagine how many Christmases that you've been through that you have no idea what God might have wanted to do in your life that you just went right past? I think about, you know, uh, somebody that's beaten on a sidewalk that the religious people walked past and left to die, and then a Samaritan has to pick him up and take care of him that was right in plain sight because the religious people couldn't see. 
And when I say this is a time of year that hope, we need to be a radiant image of hope. We need to be just like, you know, if you can imagine a glowing image of Jesus, meaning that we've so absorbed who he is that he's illuminated out of us. Are you with me? How does that happen, folks? You know, that's what I say to our guys in our devotion. I say, how does this happen? What's the nuts and bolts of what we're talking about? Because if you don't know, you can't do it. And if we go through Christmas and we just enter the season and it means nothing to us other than a tree up, a bunch of lights, and some gift you may get, you're going to get lost in a, in a vortex of depression. Just like a lost world. Or we can be the hope of Jesus Christ in the lives of those who so desperately need it. Are you with me? Do you understand how that happens? Is we have to be submerged into him in order that he would be illuminated out of us. Hello. Are you with me? We have to be submerged into him before he can be illuminated out of us. And if that isn't happening, you're going to miss Christmas, folks. And more importantly, I think, if I were to express the heart of Christ, who did not see equality with God, something to be grasped for his own benefit, but for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. He did that knowingly as he came from heaven to be born of a virgin in a manger that he was going to that cross to whoever would call upon his name. And he says to us, Go show them my love. Forget about your parties. Forget about your stinking decorations. Those are all wonderful things. But if Jesus isn't in them, then it's pointless, isn't it? So if you're submerged into him, he ought to spill out of us, right? You, you ought to have something inside of you that says that in this time and the here and now, no matter how my days go at this point, this is God's will for me in Christ Jesus. And in the midst of what I'm going to go through, I'm going to have the attitude of Christ in order that the world who doesn't know that there's a place of glory, that our language that we, that we think that we speak so eloquently, we cannot even communicate. We don't have words to express what God has prepared for us in this place that we, do, oh, by the way, we don't deserve. It's by the grace of God He's given it to us. But we get lost in the here and now, folks, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this is a time right now in this season for a time such as this that we take a moment and say, oh, God, help me to focus on Emmanuel. Help me to focus on what you want to accomplish in and through my life. Help me to receive in order that I can give. And I'm not talking about gifts, folks. I'm talking about the fullness of Christ being lived through your life. A regenerated life. Because if you have Jesus, I'm telling you, you have everything you need right now. You don't need to be a theologian. You need to show the love of Jesus in a practical way. You know, one of the guys, one of the guys shared at the very end of our men's breakfast. And he was talking about, we have the real hope. We have the real hope. You know what we try to do? Somebody's having a hard time at Christmas. You know what? We'll make them a plate of cookies and drop them over at their house and hope they'll be all right. We got some things. To, we got a party to go to, right? Wrong. They need real hope. Do you hear what I'm telling you? They don't need a glass of water. They need the well. They need the well. They need Jesus. And we have him. We have him. We have the ability to illuminate him with our lives if we'll allow God to have the freedom to work through us. Are you interested? His own wasn't interested, right? Jesus came to his own, which was his own, and they didn't receive him. They rejected him. Church, are we rejecting him? I mean, audibly we're not rejecting him, but, but are we rejecting him? Are, are we the invitation that the world sees that says Jesus loves you? 
We talked about a lot of things this morning. I'm going to tell you, my heart's so heavy because I left this evening with a lot of wiggle room because I just felt like I just really wanted to be real with you. I heard, I heard some things this morning out of the guy's hearts. We all are in the same boat together. We see the problems that are out there. We see the need desperately. But we don't need to identify what's already been identified. We need to be the solution. And it's not with a little glass of water. It's with the living water, the well. And we do that through our lives. And we do it, as, as Brother Dave said, Romans 12, 1, we need to be living sacrifice willing to be used of God. Amen? Listen to this. This is familiar to you. John three sixteen through 19. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of the light because their deeds were evil. Do you hear me, church? That's the heart of God. And, and when, when I think about you know, the parallel between him coming to, which was his own, in his own receiving him not, and then the world loving, they didn't, they didn't like the light because they're, they loved their evil deeds, right? And their fear was their evil deeds would be exposed. And you cannot illuminate Jesus with a bunch of evil deeds hidden in your life. You hear me? Come on. See the parallel there? His own didn't like him. They didn't want them, and they all, you know why? Because they were religious people that were externally doing things to be seen, and internally, Jesus said, You're whitewashed tombs, you're full of dead man's bones. Church, we can illuminate Christ, but we got to be just the same as glowing. We aren't the light, we reflect the light. The light lives within us. How much of the light of Jesus is being seen through your life? And folks, this is not an indictment to say, well, I'm going to go home and just think about, boy, what a slug am I. Man, that preacher just beat me up and now I'm just going to go home. Wake up! Listen to what I'm saying. Church, you've got to receive the light before you can illuminate the world with that light. Do you hear what I'm saying? He is more than all we need. He is everything. He is our portion. And if we'll receive that in, in, our, in the genuineness of who we are, say, God, I need to illuminate this world through what you're doing in my life. There was a time that I recognized I was a sinner and I needed you and I asked you and there you were. God, restore in me that boldness that comes from your work in me. Help me to put aside the things that are ridiculous in my life. Help me to realize the words that leave my lips could be the words that change somebody's eternity. We are a reflection of the one who died for us. But you know what else, folks? It doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. We're a reflection of the one who came out of the tomb on the third day. Are you with me? He's not hanging on the cross anymore, folks. He came down and they laid him in that tomb and all of hell laughed. And on the third day, he came out of that tomb. And the grave couldn't hold him and it can't hold you. And this world needs to know it. That is the message of Christmas. That God of all creation's love poured out on us. And at Christmas, we ought to illuminate that with our lives. Somebody needs it. Are you hearing me? Somebody needs it. Don't let the devil rob from you that you are an illumination of that light and tell you that you're nothing. That's a lie out of hell. You're an illumination of that. If you've received 
the forgiveness of God, then God sees you as if you've never sinned. And guess what? You are an illumination of that light if you choose to be. Jesus said, you don't light a candle and put it under a basket. No, you put it on the stand in order that the whole house would benefit from it. Amen? Amen. Are you ready for that, folks? Are you ready to be put on a stand in order that this world would see you because you have the light within you? Are you ready to push back the forces of darkness that says you can never make it beyond where you are today? Are you ready to believe God for what he says about you? Because this is Christmas season, folks. And we can have a celebration that's the best celebration we've ever had. We really can. But we can't do it in the dark. Do you understand? A few weeks ago I was talking about Jesus return. Do you remember? He's coming back for his church. We need to remember when he comes back, though, he's coming back as king and judge, not as a baby in a manger. You hear what I'm telling you? Romans 2.16 this will take place on the day when God judges people's secret thoughts. Jesus Christ, as my gospel declares. Revelation 19.11 says this, I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse, whose rider was called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and wages war. That's who's coming back, folks. So right now we've got this beautiful image that we get to work with. We've got a beautiful image. We've got a baby in a manger. And that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? He came from his place in glory to be born of a virgin, to die on that cross. What an inviting time. I'm just going to tell you, what an inviting time it is. When you think in terms of Inviting somebody from an, a dark place in life into the glorious light of Christ. Christmas. They've got pain in their life, sit with them. We're going to do a special service on Christmas night here. Just for you to mark that on your calendar for those who are hurting. But we can be that light right now. We can be that light. We can be that light but we first have to receive it and take it in and, and get past ourselves. Because guess what? Here's a revelation. If you've received Jesus Christ, your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen? You're going to glory. And guess what? That's a done deal. Who around you needs to know that? Right? Everybody does. So let me, let me ask you a question. Because the church typically has this dilemma that, that, that we do. We can identify problems and we can point fingers and we can put our nose up at people who come from different walks of life and they're struggling with different things, right? We can do that. Have you ever walked into a room and, and somebody didn't like you and you could tell just the way they, they looked at you, right? Church, hello? Yep. Can we be inviting to show the love of Jesus? Could, could we be the one that stood in front of the religious people who wanted to stone whoever with the forgiveness of Jesus Christ and the love of Christ in order to fill, to fill that gap. And I'm not suggesting we compromise nothing. I'm simply saying they need to meet the love of Jesus before they meet the judgment of Jesus because they're going to meet the judgment of Jesus if they don't meet the love of Jesus here. So this is Christmas season. This is the Christmas season. We took some blows this week, Amen. You know what it did in my life? I looked at my brother, man, I'm like, oh, God, help us. Oh, God, wake up your church. Tell them that you're there and you love them. And the very reasons that people let go and think there's no hope is because there's a devil that's a liar. In church, we got to be an illumination of the light. That is Jesus. We don't need to look like the world, which is a lie. Are you hearing me? 
we have to illuminate for somebody who needs Jesus. So we got to come above all the stuff that tries to cloud in around us and tries to pull us down and come up with the reality that in this season, in this whole Christmas season is Emmanuel, the one who came to walk this planet was with a purpose to be born to die, to resurrect from the dead in order that the penalty of our sin would be paid for. And then he trusted us with a mission to show the world that. You know how we do that? By salt and light. That's how we do it. Can that be the challenge of tonight? Can we say that? That, that tonight I want to illuminate Jesus through Christmas. Out of all the things that we involve ourselves in, I want to illuminate Christ. I want to receive the fullness of who he is myself in order that it just glows out of me in the midst of my struggle. I'm going to cling to the fact that he's already won. He already won. Let it be real for you tonight. Let him change you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, we always give an invitation, and, and the reason that we do that is because it gives you an opportunity to respond. Do you know how many times you'll hear something and then you'll just go about what you're doing and it just doesn't even roll through your head again? So maybe the next week, and you know what the craziest thing is? Is that if I ask you next week what I preached about, you might not be able to tell me. And that would suggest that there was nothing that happened with what you heard. Amen? Folks, listen, I'm not trying to put an indictment against anybody. I'm just trying to be as real as it gets. I've sat in the seats for years and years. You know what? I sat in churches and I was just somebody that was just blended into the crowd, and I get it. I get it. We're not called to be that. We're called to illuminate the one who rescued us. So somebody else receives that. And if, if we live it every day, the more exposure you have to light, the more you glow. You hear what I'm telling you? So if you get in a dark place, you know what the devil wants to do? He wants to divide and conquer. That's the wrong answer. You need to be in the middle. I'm just going to tell you, folks, I'm just, want to, I'm just going to tell you something. We've got to quit settling for some lame excuse of, not, of just forsaking the assembling of the saints. Look around you, folks. This place ought to be full. And, and I'm going to tell you what happens. And any of you sitting here, you'll know exactly what I'm telling you. Is There's a reason that you can just say, well, for tonight, you know, I, <laughs> you know this happened. And so because this happened, I can't do this. You know what? There's a day that we stand before the one who paid it for us. And you're going to lay that excuse on him and you're going to be ashamed and embarrassed because he entrusted us to be salt and light. But we have to take some action in order to make that a reality. We have to fight off the attacks of the devil as he lies to us and we have to exchange those for the truths of God's word. And then we have to make application out of what God says and will illuminate the one who rescued us. Amen? So in this time of invitation, wherever you find yourself, don't go out of the door and then just go on to whatever else. Why don't we ask the Lord that this season that we're going to be a minister of his light. And, and if, if you're here tonight and you're having a hard time, this has been a hard week, and you feel like you need to be recharged, come up and let's just ask the Lord to bless you in such a way that you experience his presence in order that you can share with somebody else because if you're hurt and we want to we want to deal with that as well but i do believe we have a responsibility as the church of jesus christ that we have a battle that we're in and we it's already been won we just have to stand up and march as the music plays wherever you find yourself would you respond counselors if you would come forward
Father God, we thank you for this time. God, we want to be seen in this world as redeemed. But your word tells us, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We want to say so. Let it be seen through our lives, God, as we press forward in the pressures of this life surround us, God, with our identity in Christ as a badge of honor. God, would you help us to press forward and let this world see that we're your children. Thank you, Jesus, who made it possible. As we go from this place, help us to keep our heads up. And as the things come that take our breath away, God, thank you that you made it all possible that we live one day with you in eternity. Thank you, Jesus. Help us to not be discouraged. Help us to press forward. In Jesus' name, amen. You are dismissed.